Howdy there, Scream Freaks! You remember back in the day when you were horrified something was living under your bed just waiting to gobble you up? We've lost plenty of sleep over the terror of the Boogeyman being this horrible peeping Tom stalking us for a chance to sharpen his teeth on our bones, but did you ever stop to imagine the opposite? What if the creature under your bed wasn't a menacing, bloodthirsty beast of bad dreams, but a delightfully charming critter who only threatens your sock drawer? I'm of course referring to Mr. Bumpy, the monster of the stop-motion animated series Bump in the Night. Originally airing in the 90s for a short but memorable two seasons, Bump in the Night was basically Toy Story meets the Halloween version of Gumby. Within the shadows of this seemingly ordinary house is a secret world of small-scale adventures among the refuse of a nameless 10-year-old boy's bedroom. Mr. Bumpy is the bump in Bump in the Night. Living under the faceless kid's bed, he's a regular party animal who's often jamming it out while on the hunt for adventure, especially when it involves his favorite foods like dirty socks, dust bunnies, ice cream, and used gum. Joining him on most of his nonsensical adventures are a couple of characters from other parts of the house. Oozing from the bathroom is Squishington, a gelatinous neat freak blob that lives in the toilet tank. And then there's Molly Coddle, a fucked up comfort doll that belongs to the boy's little sister. What the fuck happened to this doll? Does the little sister get comfort playing sicko surgeon with her dolls? Does she accidentally take home the doll used for kids to point out where bad touch happened? Seriously, I want to know! Molly is often seen swooning over the sister's cute dolls who she wants to emulate, but that just makes me wonder all the more why the sister plays with this Raggedy Ann knockoff from Goodwill when she has these Barbie doll spoofs laying around. Now see, I suspect Molly's actually living in deep denial of being a dog's chew toy and hides away in the girl's bedroom seeking love and approval by convincing everyone that her mango patchwork body brings comfort to those in distress. That's some pretty dark and fucked up shit there, I tell you. So anyway, this trio meets up about every night and find themselves in humorous predicaments with other things around the house. Bugs, germs, animals, toys, food, monsters, and aliens, this is one fucking infested house. But out of all these foils to Bumpy's good time, the ones that consistently give him trouble is a toy robot named Destructo and the Closet Monster. Much like Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story, Destructo is a toy that thinks it's a cop and has to put a stop to Bumpy's shenanigans before they get too out of hand. And the Closet Monster? Well, he's just that, a fucking monster residing in the boy's closet that everyone is afraid of. Bump in the Night was a half-hour show, but every episode was broken up into one to three sketch segments. Thanks to the show's lack of need for continuity, viewers can easily jump into the series with any episode in no particular order. Most episodes ended with a musical montage recapping the episode as sung by Bumpy in the karaoke cafe. A lot of these songs could have been mind-numbing kid jingles that most would have fast-forwarded through, but Bumpy was voiced by the uncanny Jim Cumming, who has a great edge to his voice that keeps it from being too kiddy. For those who don't know, Cummings is one of the biggest voice actors in the biz and was the go-to guy for most Disney cartoons tunes in the 90s. He's also the voice that rocked the Ghostbusters theme song when it was retuned for the Extreme Ghostbusters cartoon series. Looking back at Bump in the Night after 20 years, it still holds up as an entertaining show that easily entertains adults on a basic level of silliness, as well as the kiddies. Its stop-motion animation outshines any of today's CGI tunes, the great mix of characters remain endearing, and the timeless plots still make it relatable to most anyone watching. We'd recommend the series to those who enjoy Play-Doh theater monsters of any shape or size, and anyone needing another cartoon they can easily reenact in their room. But, what do I know? I like Killer Tomato movies. I'll see you later, Scream Freaks! Let's go.